Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to discuss about uh, some of the CPU scheduling algorithms. So in that we are discussing the first type of algorithm that is first come first out scheduling algorithm. So this in this type of scheduling algorithm, so here we call it as a non-preemptive scheduling. Non-preemptive means a process will be holding the CPU till its complete execution in case of non-preemptive scheduling. So preemptive means if any new process, if it arrives in the queue, which is having highest priority or if it is having less CPU burst time, depending on the type of algorithm, the, pro the currently a process which is holding the CPU will be preempted and the CPU will be given to some other new process. So that is, uh, if any process with high priority arrives into the queue, the OAS will forcibly release the CPU from that process and assigns it to another new process. So that is called as preemptive scheduling. So in case of non-preemptive, a process will be holding the CPU till its complete execution. So that is non-preemptive. We have seen that a process always moves from one state to another state during its life cycle. So whenever the process is moving from the ready state to the running state, we say that it is a CPU uh, is uh, executing that particular task. So whenever it moves from running to waiting state, it means that in order to perform some IO operations, it has been swapped from the running state to the waiting state. And once the IO operation is completed, again it will be moved from the waiting state to the running state. So once if it finishes the execution, then only it will be moved to the running state to the exit state. So here, whenever it is moving from the running state to the exit state, or when it is moving to the from a ready state to the waiting state, we say that it is non-preemptive scheduling. So otherwise it is called as preemptive scheduling. Now in today's session, we'll discuss how the scheduling queue is implemented using first come first serve scheduling. So here there will be multiple jobs running in the system. So whenever multiple jobs are loaded from the secondary memory to primary memory for execution, then how the scheduling takes place using first come first serve scheduling algorithm. So assume that here we have been in we assume that in the system at this point of time there is only three processes and the burst time is given burst time means the time needed for the process to complete its execution so the burst time for p1 is 24 milliseconds for process p2 it is 3 and for process p3 it is 3 milliseconds so given a process and burst time we are supposed to find in first come first scheduling we are supposed to find the average waiting time and average turnaround time of these processes till its completed execution. So here we say that first come first served is a non-preemptive scheduling algorithm. It means it will not release a, a process will not release the CPU till its complete execution. So that is why it is called as non-preemptive scheduling. So any process which is holding the CPU will not release until uh, its complete execution. It will not release the CPU. So process P1 needs 24 milliseconds to complete its execution and assume that it has a first process arrived. So what do we do? First we try to write the gun chart. Gun chart is a graphical representation of processes and their CPU burst time. Okay, we try to write the gun chart. So the first process in the queue now, the first process in the ready queue is P1, it has arrived, then P2 has arrived into the ready queue and then the P3 has arrived. So first is P1, so it will take, CPU will take P1. So its arrival time is 0 here. This is the first process, its waiting time here. It is 0, so P1 will execute. It will be holding the CPU till its complete execution. So it is it is taking 24 milliseconds. It needs 24. So 0 to 24 we write. And the next process, 
the CPU will be uh, the P1 will be holding the CPU till its complete execution for 24 milliseconds. And the next process which has arrived is P2. Its burst time is 3 milliseconds. So next we write P2. P2 3 milliseconds it needs. So in the gun chart we write 24 plus 3. It is 27. And the next process. Now this is completed. This is completed. And then the P3 process in the queue. P3. And its burst time is again 3 milliseconds. So we represent that in the gun chart. So now we write 27 plus 3, it is 13. So we try to represent the processes and their burst times in the form of a chart, gun chart we call it as. Now next is we have to calculate what is the turnaround time and the waiting time of these processes. So waiting time means how long the processes have been waiting in the screen for the CPU. Turnaround time means the time of submission of a process into the ready queue till its complete execution. What is the time taken to complete that process? From the time of a submission till its completion is called as turnaround time. Then we have something called as completion time or execution time. So at what time that particular task or process is completed? So we call it as completion time. In short, I am writing it as PT, completion time. So see the gun chart, process P1 has completed at 24 milliseconds. So the completion time is 24. The completion time for P2 is 27. And the completion time for P3 is 30. So we have written the completion time. And the next is we have to calculate the turnaround time. Turnaround time is the time from the time of a submission of a process till its complete execution. So here, turnaround time. Okay, so now the turnaround time, when the process here, we don't have any arrival time here. No arrival time is given. So if the arrival time was given, then we could have taken completion time minus of arrival time. But here we don't have an arrival time. Process. So here, the turnaround time, when that particular process has been completed. This process P1, we assume that all the processes have arrived at 0 second here. So here, the turnaround time, when is this process is completed, P1 is 24. And again, P2 it has completed at 27. And P3 has completed at 30. Because turnaround time is equal to completion time minus arrival time. So here, the we don't have the arrival time here. That is completion time minus arrival time. And here we assume that all the processes has arrived at zero. At, uh, all the processes arrived at time zero. So at time zero. So the arrival time is zero. That is why it is now 24 minus zero. 24 minus zero arrival time. All has arrived at time zero. So 27 minus zero again 27. 30 minus zero again 30. So what is the waiting time, waiting time for these processes? So guys remember, always the waiting time is equal to turnaround time minus the burst time. So what is the waiting time? Waiting time is equal to turnaround time minus burst time. Burst time is the time of execution. Sorry, the time needed to complete its execution. Turnaround time is the time it spent in the waiting queue plus to complete the execution. So it includes waiting time plus the burst time, time needed to complete its execution. So waiting time for P1 here now. So waiting time for P1 is what? Turnaround time minus burst time. So what is the turnaround time here? 24. Burst time is 24. 24 minus 24. That is turnaround time minus burst time. So waiting time for P1 is 0. Then what is the waiting time for P2? That is turnaround time minus burst time. 27 minus 3. So it means 24. What is the turnaround time for P3? 30 minus 3. That is turnaround time minus burst time. 30 minus 3 is 27. So this is the waiting time for all the three processes. That is P10, P2 24, P3 27. So in the exam, they will ask you to find what is the average waiting time and the what is the 
average turnaround time of all the processors. So average waiting time is equal to, you should take the, uh, you know how to calculate I hope, you should add all this and divide by the number of processors. Add all the waiting times and divide by number of processors. So all the waiting times, process P1 0, process P2 24 waiting time, process P3 27 divided by the total number of processors 3. So 24 plus 27 it is 51. So calculate the average waiting time 51 divided by 3. So 51 divided by 3 means it is 17 millisecond. So the average waiting time for this is 17 millisecond. Similarly calculate the average turnaround time. So average turnaround time add all this that is 7 plus 4 11 that is 8. 581 divided by 3. So average turnaround time is 81 divided by 3. So you will get around uh, 6. Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven milliseconds. So, so hope, uh, sorry, it is 81 divided by 3. So, 27. 27 milliseconds. So, hope you understood now. So, average turnaround time, average turnaround time of this is 27 milliseconds and average waiting time is 17 milliseconds. So take the total time divided by the number of processes, three processes and total waiting time divided by number of processes. So here this pass come first serve will hold the process till its complete execution and it is called as non preemptive scheduling. And first come first serve suffers from a problem called as convoy effect. Convoy, the disadvantage of this algorithm is it struggles from convoy effect. Convoy means whenever there is a lengthy process means the processes with less CPU per time has to wait till the complete execution of that particular process. Suppose if you have a process with 90 milliseconds and another process is having 2 milliseconds but this process P2 with 2 milliseconds has to wait till the process P1 with 90 milliseconds will get completed. So here the processes with less CPU burst time is starving for a longest period of time for the CPU. So making just to execute for 2 milliseconds it is waiting 90 milliseconds. So it means that again wastage of time for this process. So here we say that such an effect where, where the low CPU bound processes has to wait for longest period of time for a process with highest CPU burst time. Hope you have understood. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment. Thank you.